Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover identifying equivalent fractions. In previous videos, we talked about what equivalent fractions are, and we've gone through a lot of examples. So we're going to build on all of that here and take a look at identifying equivalent fractions. Now remember, equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same amount, the same part of a whole. So in our examples in this video, we will be given a fraction, and then we need to identify all of the equivalent fractions. Keep in mind, there may be more than one correct answer for each example. Let's jump into number one, where we have which fractions are equivalent to four eighths. And we have four eighths shown right here with a pie. There were eight pieces in total and four are left. So four eighths of the pie is left. We need all of the equivalent fractions. So all of the pies with the same amount left, the same part of the whole pie left. Let's start with choice A, one half. Is this equivalent to four eighths? Is the same amount of pie left? Do we have the same part of the whole? Looking at the pictures of the pies, yes, we do have equivalent fractions here. These fractions represent the same amount, the same part of the whole. So four eighths and one half are equivalent fractions. Let's move on to choice B where we have two sixths. So is two sixths equivalent? No, this is less than four eighths. We do not have the same amount here. So this is not equivalent. Moving on to choice C, three sixths. Is this equivalent? Yes, we have the same amount of pi left. These fractions represent the same part of the whole pi. Four eighths and three sixths are equivalent fractions. And lastly, D, we have two fourths. This is the same amount as well. So two fourths is an equivalent fraction. Four eighths, one half, three sixths, and two fourths are all equivalent fractions. They represent the same amount of the whole pie, the same part of the whole pie. Let's move on to number two. Taking a look at number two, we have which fractions are equivalent to one third? And here is a model of one third right here that we can go off of. One equal part is shaded in out of the three total equal parts. Let's start with A, two fourths. Is two fourths equivalent? No, two fourths is greater than one third. We can see that more of the rectangle is shaded in. A greater amount, a greater part of the whole rectangle is shaded in. So this is not equivalent. How about B, two sixths? Is this an equivalent fraction? Yes, this is equivalent. The same amount of the whole rectangle is shaded in. Two sixths is an equivalent fraction. Moving on to C, we have one eighth. Is that an equivalent fraction? No, one eighth is less than one third. Less is shaded in. So one eighth is not equivalent. And then lastly, for D, we have three ninths. Is three ninths equivalent? Yes, we have the same amount of the whole rectangle shaded in here. So three ninths is an equivalent fraction. So one third, two sixths, and three ninths are all equivalent fractions. Let's move on to our last two examples, numbers three and four. Taking a look at numbers three and four, let's start with number three, where we have which fractions are equivalent to three fourths. And here we're going to be working with number lines to help us out. Remember, equivalent fractions are going to be at the same place, the same position on a number line. So we have our number line with three fourths marked. Let's go to A, five eighths. Five eighths is right here on the number line. 
So is five eighths equivalent to three fourths? Is it in the same place on the number line? No, five eighths is not equivalent to three fourths. Let's move on to B, two thirds. Two thirds is right here on the number line. Is it at the same place on the number line as three fourths? No, it's close, but not quite. So two thirds is not equivalent. Moving on to C, we have four sixths, which is right here on the number line. So is four sixths equivalent to three fourths? No, it's not in the same place on the number line. So this is not equivalent. Now I do wanna mention looking at two thirds above, notice that four sixths and two thirds are equivalent though. But that's not our question here. Lastly, let's look at D where we have six eighths. Six eighths is right here on the number line. And we can see that it's at the same place as three fourths on the number line. Six eighths is equivalent. So for number three, three fourths and six eighths are equivalent fractions. Moving on to number four, we have which fractions are equivalent to four sixths? And we have a model to go off of right here. Four sixths of that rectangle is shaded. Let's start with A, where we have two thirds. And we just talked about these fractions in number three, actually. Two thirds is equivalent, and we can see that with this model. The same amount, the same part of the whole rectangle is shaded in. So two thirds is equivalent. And we saw that with the number lines in number three. Let's move on to B, where we have three fourths. Is three fourths equivalent? No, three fourths is greater than four sixths. A greater amount of that rectangle is shaded in. So this is not equivalent. Taking a look at C, we have eight twelfths. Eight twelfths has the same amount of the rectangle shaded in. So eight twelfths is an equivalent fraction. And then lastly, choice D, we have three fifths. Is three fifths an equivalent fraction? No, three fifths is less than four sixths. Less of the rectangle is shaded in. So this is not equivalent. So there you have it. There are some examples of identifying equivalent fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.